The Las Vegas Raiders are in deep trouble being two and four, and some of that trouble has started to spill over with star players like Max Crosby pushing his own linebackers coach, Mike Codwell, who is well respected within the Raiders organization as well as the NFL. Now, Max Crosby did clean this up in his after game presser in the locker room where he said he loves Mike Codwell and this was just a love push. Codwell was hyping him up. He hyped Codwell back up as well. Unfortunately, on camera, that's not what it looks like. It does appear as though Mike Codwell was caught off guard by the shove, almost even fell over, and didn't look very happy about it. However, this is football, as Max Crosby stated, and they are alpha males, and that's just the way that they communicate. It's on a different level than the regular average person. I don't think that it actually was a love tap. I think that Max Crosby was a little bit frustrated and maybe Codwell said something to Max and Max let out a little bit of steam by giving him a little shove. Is it a big deal? Are they going to blow this up into something that Codwell gets fired or Max Crosby gets benched? I don't think so. At the end of the day, Max Crosby is a team guy. At the end of the day, Mike Codwell is a great coach. I'm sure that they have a great working relationship, a lot of respect for each other. As Max said in his presser, he loves Codwell, and there is no story there. So we'll leave it be, but it's just like Travis Kelsey was trying to explain away his shoving his head coach, Andy Reid, when we put the whooping on him during last Christmas, as he just loves Andy Reid, and it was nothing more. He was just trying to hype up Andy Reid. But we all know that that wasn't the case. Listen, sometimes tempers boil over. Sometimes things happen. And sometimes players get upset and there's some pushing and some shoving and some yelling. It appears as though that is the point where the Raiders are at right now. Max Crosby is clearly not happy with the direction that the team is going. And he is doing his best and giving his all to continue to make this team good. I don't think that this should be an overreaction Monday as some of my counterparts out there on YouTube like to put out. I don't think this is a situation where we got to fire everybody. Now, I did put out a reaction video yesterday after the game saying that Antonio Pierce, I think, has failed. I think the experiment of Antonio Pierce has failed. I also think that Luke Getze has failed. Luke Getze coming out of the gate, his first 10 scripted plays, they go well, and after that, everything kind of goes downhill. Now you combine that with some stupid play calling like running the ball on first and 20, running the ball on second and 20, that's a bad formula for winning. Even Coach Antonio Pierce in his presser today said that, yeah, maybe that wasn't a great idea. However, there's a lot more things going on, like... The star running back who has emerged as a star for the Raiders in Alexander Madison being taken out of the game when he was completely healthy for an entire series, which really stalled things out. And this is a player personnel situation where you got to scratch your head like Jacorian Bennett kept coming out of the game yesterday, even though he was playing great football. And Antonio Pierce is like, oh, it's just player personnel packages. Um, he's so far this year been your best corner, better than Jack Jones. Why would you ever take him out of the game unless he's gassed and needs breath? And that didn't appear to be the case. Same thing with Alexander Madison. He wasn't gassed and he wasn't injured. He was just getting into his groove. And the very next drive, you take him out of the game and you start Amir Abdullah as your every down back. It doesn't make any sense. It's just bad coaching and bad coaching decisions, and it needs to get cleaned up. Whoever's making these decisions, if it's Luke Getze or if it's Antonio Pierce, Antonio Pierce is going to take the, the heat at the end of the day because he's the head coach, and rightly so, he should. Now, with that being said, was everything a complete and total colossal failure with Aiden O'Connell as the starter yesterday? Well, I would argue no. Aiden O'Connell actually had a really good game minus his one interception. Now that one interception was a big deal, but at that point, we're playing garbage time, we're trying to catch up, and he's trying to make a play all the way back in his end zone. So I don't really fault him for this, 
but he was kind of just put in this situation. When you actually look at his stats, he wasn't bad. 27 of 40, 67.5% completion rating, 227 yards, a touchdown, a pick. His average yards was 5.68, which is pretty standard in the NFL right now. And his passer rating was a respectable 79.9%. And he had a long of 30 yards. And everybody says he's a statue and going to get sacked 35 times by TJ Watt. He only got sacked once and it wasn't TJ Watt. In fact, a bright spot with the Raiders is DJ Glaze is showing himself as a potential premier right tackle in the NFL. Who would have thought that being a third round draft pick? Everybody thought Thayer Mumford would have that locked up. But due to Thayer's injuries, DJ Glaze has gotten his chance and boy is he shining bright. Him and JPJ are real stills out of this draft. Brock Bowers, JPJ, and DJ Glaze. Those three out of our seven draft picks are absolute studs, and I'm so glad that we have them moving forward. So not everything is super bleak when it comes to the future of the Raiders. There are some super bright spots as well. One negative, though, a stat that we never want to see is for the first time since 1964, the Raiders have been down by double digits at some point in the first half of five straight games, and now six. This is not a stat that the Raiders ever want to have on the stat sheets because this is how you lose games. Now, talking about Aiden O'Connell, he played a pretty good game, and to be honest, Aiden O'Connell would have had two touchdowns if one wasn't called back on a stupid penalty for being downfield. He also had some really big plays downfield. Brock Bowers catching behind the back one-handed catches, which was amazing for 20-plus yards. And there were some drop passes as well. But Aiden O'Connell did overthrow Brock Bowers on that interception. That was 100% on Aiden O'Connell. He just floated it. And he floated it to Harrison Bryant as well over the middle. Maybe this is just because he's rusty. He hasn't been out there playing. I think these things will start to kind of weigh out come next week and moving forward. Give him some more time. Let him really show what he can do. We can't judge him on one game just yet. I think that based on what Antonio Pierce said today in his presser, Aiden O'Connell's starting job is still safe. He will be the starting quarterback coming next week. And hopefully he'll be able to work out some of the kinks. Now, Jacoby Myers should be good to go for next week, according to Antonio Pierce. It will still remain a day-to-day -day situation. He was almost good enough to go on Sunday, but just wasn't, wasn't there yet. And Devontae Adams, will he be traded or not? Well, Ian Rappaport said that, according to his sources, Devontae Adams really loves Aiden O'Connell and would love to play with Aiden O'Connell again. Therefore, Devontae Adams may not be traded. However, Devontae Adams was not at the game yesterday again. Also, still no Michael Mayer. We're paying a guy to not show up to the facility at all, which is strange. At this point, if whatever is going on with Michael Mayer, if he cannot figure it out and get back on this team, then I think the Raiders should cut Michael Mayer. Just cut him. Don't even try to trade him. Just let him go. And we'll focus on the guys that we have in the building right now because this disappearing act is totally unacceptable, especially with no valid excuses to what's going on. Nobody knows what is going on with Michael Mayer. I don't think the Raiders even really know what's going on with him. So I think his disappearing act is a very serious concern and the Raiders should cut him. Devontae Adams Look, at the end of the day, the trade pull for Devontae Adams is all but pretty much dried up. There is a losing record. They have a losing record down with the Saints. They have a losing record and a fired head coach with the Jets. And nobody else is really willing to come up and pay for Devontae Adams what the Raiders are requesting, which is an unequivocal second round draft pick. And they take on all of Devontae Adams' pay. The Raiders will not pay a dime of it. And there's just really no market for Devontae Adams. He's a 31-year-old wide receiver in the NFL, and the teams that are winning don't need him, and the teams that are losing, he wouldn't want to go to. So I think all in all, at the end of the day, 
Devontae Adams is going to be forced to stay with the Raiders. And if he's healthy enough to play on Sunday, we could even see him come back and reunite with Hayden O'Connell, put the water under the bridge, and just let bygones be bygones and end this drama. So yeah, all is not lost, even though the Raiders do currently, because of their record being 2-4, and four, only have a 25% chance of actually making the playoffs. It's not all doom and gloom. The Raiders may not make the playoffs this year. They may have a top five draft pick because our record is going to be so bad. We may only win four to six games this year. And if that's the case, we'll have a top five draft pick. There's only a few teams that are actually worse than the Raiders right now. So that will give us a shot at moving up and grabbing the quarterback of the future. We'll see what's going to happen in the offseason. But if Devontae comes back, Jacoby comes back, and Brock Bowers keeps being Brock Bowers, DJ Glaze and JPJ keep rocking out on that offensive line, and that offensive line can hold up, and they did a really good job against TJ Watt yesterday in the game. It was just a bunch of unforced errors, fumbles by Lauby, fumbles by Abdullah, an interception, a punt block, all of those negative things, touchdowns being taken off by penalties, touchdowns not even being challenged by the coach when it was a touchdown yes all of those mistakes are why the Raiders lost the game if you take all of those mistakes away from yesterday's game the Raiders actually would have won that game and I think they would have won it handedly because the Raiders defense was really given fits to the Pittsburgh Steelers and had it not been for the unforced errors and the penalties that pulled back big plays and touchdowns, the Raiders easily could have put up over 28 points. And without the turnovers, Pittsburgh doesn't score their points as well. So I think the Raiders shot themselves in the foot. I don't think Pittsburgh beat the Raiders. If the Raiders can stop doing these negative plays and stupid penalties at inopportune times, the Raiders can actually beat good teams. So we'll see what's going to happen. However, I want to end on this. The fact that the yellow towels were spinning in our stadium and when TJ Watt is out on the field hyping up the crowd for the Steelers in our stadium, this is on Mark Davis and this is on Coach Antonio Pierce because when you don't put a good product on the field, the Raiders fans aren't going to show up. And if the Raiders fans don't show up, guess who will? The opposing fans because it's Vegas. People will go to Vegas to see a Steelers game, a Broncos game, a Chiefs game, because, hey, they get a little vacation in Vegas and they get to go watch their team whoop on the silver and black. It's a great pastime for them, and it is an embarrassment for us. So the Raiders organization as a whole and this coaching staff as a whole need to do a better job at putting a better product on the field so that the Raiders fans show up to our own home games. I, for one, am sick of it. If you are too, drop a comment down below. Let's go Raiders.